and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to break down a patch that I came up with last night that uses the Zuleric Repetitor from Noise Engineering to trigger some melodic voices which are playing the different voicings within a chord. This was an idea I had last night when I was thinking about how quite often in Eurorack things work monophonically. You have oscillators that play one note at a time. There are things that can do chords and that can play polyphonically but they're, they're sort of few and far between. So I really wanted to look at ways you could kind of explore fake polyphony if you like through using multiple sound sources. The idea for this patch came about, I was thinking about how you could take a single note, turn that into a chord and then spread that across a few different sound sources and trigger those sound sources ry rhythmically in various interesting ways. To do this I've decided to reconfigure the case a little bit from the first video. I brought in the Zularic Repetitor, which is normally in my drum case. This is a four channel rhythm trigger generator that's based on African music theory by Noise Engineering. It basically takes a clock in and it generates four channels of rhythmic triggers, which you can use. Normally you'd use them with drum modules or percussion sounds, but I was interested in using them to rhythmically trigger some melodic parts. Uh, the second part of the idea was to take a, a sort of single note in from the keyboard, bring it into the system, and then divide amongst four different sound sources, but then also dynamically kind of move those notes around a bit so they're not all playing the same note all the time. There's a bit of dynamic um, voice allocation and, and transposing going on, which I'll get into in a bit. Um, I'll talk you through what's in the case, and then I'll patch it up bit by bit, and I'll explain how it all came together. So it starts with Pamela's new workout, really, as most of the patches do. Um, that's going to provide the clock source for Zulera Repetitor. It also provides some offsets which I use to transpose the note information uh, and it provides um, a bit of very basic sequencing for a kick drum and a hi-hat pattern which are on the other rack. Not using the Moskva today, I'm using Zulera Repetitor as I've said. Uh, I've got a Molt there, I'm using Random Step uh, which I took delivery of this week. I'm using that to take copies of the triggers that are triggering a couple of the sound sources, generating some random voltages whenever those triggers happen and using those random voltages to modulate some of the parameters just to make the voices a bit more interesting and dynamic. In terms of the sound sources themselves, I've got one that's off screen, which is the Behringer Model D, the Minimo clone, and that's going to provide the kind of tonic note, simple bass kind of part in this patch. I've got, um, working from right to left, I've got the uh, EN129 oscillator, which I used previously from Danny Sound, and I've already kind of set up a very simple subtractive synth voice patch over here. Uh, with the um, sawtooth wave going into a low pass filter from MRG, going into a VCA from MRG, and the VCA is being enveloped by the AI003 looping ADSR from AI Synthesis. I will also use a bit of LFO from the IntelliJ L1U VCO in LFO mode, which I'll use to modulate the sawtooth depth and the filter cutoff, which I'll patch in a bit later. The other two sound sources are plats and rings. In this case, it's nano rings, the AHP uh, clone from Jack Plug, which I got through Pusherman, another DIY kit. I'm using the disting to do a bit of dynamic switching of note voltages, which I'll explain in a while. And I'm using Contour 1 to slew uh, the note information for rings so that there's a bit of portamento and glide between the pitches. That's kind of it for this case. In the other case, as I say, I've got Model D. I've got um, two drum modules, uh, which I'm using today just to keep a very simple kind of rhythmic backbeat to the, the patch. One is the BD-808, the 808 kick drum module from Tip Top. The other is the 2HB hat. On software, I'm going to be using um, a bit of reverb from Valhalla DSP's Supermassive, uh, a fantastic free plugin. And I'll be using a bit of delay from Echo Boy Jr. from Sound Toys. So that's everything I'm going to be using today, pretty much. Um, I'm going to just patch up everything now so that that we can get the triggers from Zulera Repetitor playing all four of the sound sources in a rhythm pattern, all playing the same note, um, just to get things started and then we'll start making it a bit more complex. So let's see how that all patches up. Okay, so this is everything connected up. Um, I've got the note information from the key step coming into the molt here, and I've literally just melted that to the volt product of input on all three of these sound sources and to the Model D in the other rack. Uh, I've got the four trigger outputs from the Zulera Repetitor. Again, just going straight into rings, plats, into the envelope on the EN129, and into the uh, envelope triggers on the Model D over there. So now, if I just start with the Model D, I'll just um, get it playing. And I'm just going to use the first um, of the old world rhythms in here, which is an African rhythm. That's just playing a square wave through a filter. Very, very simple. I'll bring in plats next. 
that's in two operator FM mode, displaying a kind of FME tone. Just adjust the envelope slightly. I'll bring in the EN129. And finally I'll bring in rings. polyphonic mode so there's a bit of overlapping. So they're all playing the same note but they're all playing this different rhythm. You can see the LEDs flashing there to indicate where the triggers are. You can offset these two, three and four parts here. So you can play around. You can also modulate those with CV. I'm just going to keep them in the basic pattern for now. And now when I change a note on the keyboard, I don't have to hold it down, just need to trigger a new note. So the next step is really to make it a bit more harmonically interesting and kind of spread the notes around a bit so that they're playing notes of a chord and maybe dynamically move around between the different sound sources a little bit. Um, so there's a couple of things I'm going to do. I'm going to keep the Model D playing the tonic or, or the, the root note of whatever note I'm feeding into the system. Um, I'm going to tune the EN129 up a perfect fifth and I'll leave that kind of playing that note all the time. Um, if I take out rings, if I take out plats temporarily, I'll just tune that. Hopefully no one with perfect pitch is wincing with that. That's just done by ear, but I think that sounds pretty much like a fifth to me. And then the next step I thought I'd try would be to add some voltage offsets to the pitches that are being fed to rings and plats. Now, this is quite straightforward to do with the palette case because this malt and these two summing mixers at the top here are normal to each other. So what you can do is take uh, an, uh, effectively a copy of that input voltage goes into the first summing mixer there. I can add another voltage which I'm going to take from Pamela's new workout into there. Um, in this case I'm going to add enough voltage to increase the pitch by a minor third. Then I can take that summed output and feed that into one of the modules. I can take a copy of that into the next summing uh, mixer and I can take another offset voltage from Pam's, in that case a perfect fifth. Um, and I'll, that means that output there can feed into the other sound source. Now. Those voltage offsets that are coming from PAMS are not constant. They are going to be set to clock divisions which are odd and not lined up together. So you'll occasionally have an extra minor third added there. You'll occasionally have an extra fifth added there. And that means that these outputs between them will alternate between a third, a perfect fifth, a minor seventh, because you're adding a fifth to a minor third, sometimes nothing, depending on how that gate pattern goes. So by taking these voltage offsets, staggering them so that they appear in a odd clock divisions, you end up with this kind of pseudo random pitch shifting with notes jumping around the notes of the chord, which is quite nice. And you combine that with the, with the rhythms, which are quite complex being fed in, you end up with quite a complex sounding patch. Um, I'll just demonstrate how that works by patching that up. Okay, so now I've got that voltage offset from one output of PAMS going into there. That's on a divide by three. Uh, and I've got the perfect fifth voltage offset going into that sum on a divide by uh, eight. So divide by three and divide by eight will um, offset each other nicely. Um, by the way, the way to get those voltage offsets in PAMS is to adjust the level of the gate signal. And if you set the output to quantize chromatically, then you can kind of dial in semitones um, through those percentages. So how does that sound? So you can hear that Platz is now alternating quite neatly between the tonic and the minor third. But then you bring in rings. And it gets, sometimes it gets nothing, sometimes it gets up a fifth, sometimes it gets up a seventh. Sometimes just a third. So that's already quite interesting, but I can make it even more interesting by taking 
by taking those two pitches and um, randomly swapping them between the two modules using the switch uh, algorithm on the disting and using another clock divided uh, gate pattern from PAMS. So let's take this into the switch. Take our two voltage sources to the inputs and take the switch outputs into the pitch inputs of the two modules. Try that again. So now they're swapping places. The clock division on that switch trigger is um, divided by seven. So we've got a divide by three, a divide by eight, and a divide by seven among these different things. I'm just going to pick those at random. It means you get this nicely evolving pseudo-random sound of actually all playing notes within the chord that we want. If we bring in the tonic again. And if we bring in the uh, EN129 again. Take a kick drum. And if at this point we add some effects. And if we take an LFO to that EM129 filter. sounding pretty cool already especially with the effects added um, there's just one more step which to add a, a little bit more of this um, sample and hold modulation to the rings and plats voices so we can get them sounding a bit more uh, interesting let's just uh, patch that in okay so it's a bit spaghetti junction like now but what's happened is I've taken the um, trigger outputs for rings and plats split them using a malt so that um, I can feed the random step to generate some sample and hold random voltages. They're going into a couple of parameters on rings and plats. And let's just see how that sounds.
so there you have it it's a pretty complex patch but I think it just shows what you can do with a couple of well placed modules um, it really shows the power of Eurorack I think that you can just feed in a single note from this keyboard and feed in a clock signal to a couple of other well placed modules and with a few bits of jiggery pokery you end up with this incredibly complex evolving organic sounding patch which kind of you can just leave it to play and it does its thing one thing I was thinking about was how you could take this to the next level and make it a bit more harmonically complex because at the moment you're just transposing the same chord effectively across the keyboard when you change the note I'd quite like to be able to do some cool progressions maybe you know change from major to minor do some inversions um, I'm kind of at the limits of what I can do with this system it probably is possible if I use some clever offsets and sequencing uh, but I think something like the instro harmonic module would be quite a good one to, to use for that kind of thing but um, still with this kind of evolving rhythmic stuff there's quite a lot you can do with a static um, chord you could play you know play with some different chord voicings that kind of thing um, lots of stuff to explore if you've got any ideas for how you could take this patch further let me know any other feedback is always gratefully received hope you've enjoyed the video like subscribe tell your friends and uh, more soon thanks for watching